we've always said that as long as we could make more money being in the band than we could, say, working at McDonald's or Target, then we would choose being in the band. <laughs> right. And only because that's what would be left for us. If we weren't doing this, that's the kind of skill level of any contribution to society that we would have. <laughs> I mean, simply because we've, we spent our whole adult lives pursuing this. I worked at this fast food restaurant in Oklahoma City, uh, Long John Silver's fried fish and french fries and stuff. And I worked there for 11 years from the time I was 16 until, you know, I was 27 or so, you know. And I'd be working late at night, and it's in the, you know, sort of reasonably bad area of town. And we got robbed a couple of times, especially in the late 70s, because the, the economy and everything really got horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the first time we got robbed, I was the only, and I'm not saying this because I'm racist or anything, I'm just being pragmatic. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You know, I was the only white guy. I was working with a bunch of black women, and, um, guys who came in were black and they were pissed off and they had the biggest gun I've ever seen in my life wow. only because it's pointed at me that it seems so big and um, you know we all laid on the ground and I thought F this is this is it here I am I'm, I'm 17 and it, this is how it ends wow. you're just you're just working one second and the next second you're laying on the ground and some guy puts a bullet in your head obviously they robbed us and left and didn't kill me but um, I remember the elation of just we all cried. We couldn't stop crying and laughing and just jumping up and down. I mean, we were celebrating like we just won a million dollars. And the idea of like, we are alive and isn't it a great thing? It, it, I, yeah. think it, I think it changed me. I think the idea of, of sort of confronting this always present idea that people around you are going to die or you're going to die or... I think it makes living better. It really does. I mean, to me, I hate this notion that I would ever forget of how temporary this whole thing is. You know, life is worth celebrating and worth living, even though we're all headed to the same hole at the end of the day. So, without sort of coming to terms with it, you're not coming to terms with some of the joys of life at the same time. I don't know. I think somewhere along the way, music allows you to sing and talk and think about those things and it can be beautiful instead of being you know horrible now, i remember when my father was dying i remember listening to bjork and listening to john coltrane and these things that i don't know why but music has the power to transcend your physical being and take you up just a little bit and because music has a metaphysical quality it gets up there in these things and, and it really makes your life beautiful same thing for virtually every human that's ever going to be alive. Things that make them sad are going to be love, loss of love, and death, fear of isolation. It's a really small little corner. So I think anytime you sing about those, you're probably going to have a crowd that knows exactly what you're talking about. But when you sing about things that make you happy, which I like to do that as well, you know, you never know if you're going to hit the mark. That's why when I sing a song like She Don't Use Jelly, People go, oh, that's crazy. What are you talking about? You know, and even though they enjoy it, they don't understand it. <laughs> Stuff like when I sing about the spoonful waste of time and people understand this is about death and meaning that you put into your life. You know, they go, I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> when I go in there and I'm singing about, you know, things that seem to be personal, they can be my own exact personal experience, yet I, if I'm doing the job right, I can make it seem like it's your story at the same time. I'm not just simply pouring my guts out, I'm pouring my guts out so they can feel like your guts at the same time. Do you well, I should let you go. All right, well, thanks a bunch. I'm sitting in the lobby at the uh, where the elevators come out. People have all been looking at me in my bare feet, talking existential bull <laughs> with you, you know, as they get in and out the elevators. <laughs> Hilarious. That was the odd thing I was hearing in the background. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thanks again, and I really appreciate you taking out the time on a Saturday. Okay. Well, we'll I'm glad you called. Okay. Okay. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.